really gusty, windy start. Uh, winds coming in now out of the southwest up to about 40 miles per hour. We're in the mid to upper 50s through the morning and we'll get to right around noon about 62 to 65 degrees. Winds will kick up. It's going to get gusty through the afternoon. So we've got well, two thumbs down now on the emoji cast. And by four o'clock, actually, our temperatures will drop into the 50s. That would be when we would typically hit the high for the day. But with those winds shifting and the cold front rolling through, it'll get cooler. So really windy all day long. We've got gusts between about 40 and 60 miles per hour. It does get calmer and cooler tomorrow with that front moving out. We'll get some calm conditions. You can see with our sunrise, a little hint of it there on the horizon. It's going to be a bright drive. We had some cloud cover yesterday to help things out. This morning, it's going to be bright and windy. So unfortunately, two factors for the drive. Wind southwest right now here in Denver at about 25 to 40 miles per hour. Recent wind gust out at the airport, 33 miles per hour. A really bumpy flight in or out of DIA today. Littleton 41. Uh, it's really going to be from Denver across the southern edge of the metro area where the winds will be the biggest problem this morning. And then watch what happens with those winds. So again, coming in out of the southwest through the morning, mid to upper 50s through about 8 o'clock, low 60s, low to mid 60s through early afternoon and you'll notice those wind vectors do get uh, quite a bit faster by early afternoon. Then it will shift. So out of the northwest by the afternoon, early evening, cooler air. So by six o'clock, we're at about 50 degrees here in town. Slight chance that we would see a spotty shower roll off the foothills. Better chance of getting some scattered rain and snow you'll see there in the mountains. And again, west of the divide, northern central mountains will pick up a little light rain and snow. Overnight, we'll see some pretty mild temperatures. We're close to 40 at about midnight, and you'll notice the winds do calm down. Cooler air will push in through the state tomorrow. We'll see highs only in the 50s tomorrow on Wednesday. Look at the alerts. These are high wind warnings. Earlier this morning, it was a high wind watch. Switch, uh, switched over to a high wind warning. It covers the entire, well, most of the metro, metro area, really from Denver off to the east. But as you get up into the foothills and northern Front Range Mountains, we're also under a fire weather warning. Fire danger extremely high. 60s today, upper 50s, calmer, cooler tomorrow. Looks like actually a pretty nice day on Wednesday. Then another windy one. Unfortunately, Thursday with this next storm, it's going to be a bigger, stronger system, quite a bit colder, too. We'll go from upper 60s on Thursday to upper 40s on Friday. So a good 20 degree drop through the end of the week. Likely we'll see a few scattered showers, even a few thunderstorms on Friday afternoon. That's going to switch over to snow by early Saturday. Then skies will gradually clear. So my pick, Jace, of the week, and obviously not too hard to pick. Monday. Go Sunday. <laughs> You're going Monday. Well, Monday's pretty good, too, yeah. <laughs> there you go. We do have some very strong winds. Lisa's been talking about the strong winds. We have some high wind advisories and some alerts. Southbound I-25 is still closed south of Pueblo, and that's for a rolled-over semi that was blown over because of the strong winds. And they also have a high wind advisory not only there, but also on I-70 heading west of town, basically between D uh, Golden all the way up to Gypsum, which is going to be a little bit west of Eagle. From the camera up that way, you can actually see here at Idaho Springs, the camera doesn't bounce around too much, but they do have the high wind advisory for the folks that will be driving up that way on I-70. Here in town, it's not too bad. 225 looks okay. You can see it's about 10 minutes on the north or southbound side. And that camera right there at Parker Road and I-225 looks okay as well. So far, so good on the highways. Yeah, it is gusty here in town, but the winds are really a big problem to the west and the south. At 520, we have your daily checkout at DIA. Parking looks good. All lots are open. And security wait times, not too bad either. North security gate is the worst at 16 minutes. Well, Kendrick Lamar just did something no rapper has ever done ever. before. But first, cell phone video captures another incident at a Starbucks where someone says they were discriminated against because of their race. It is now just about 525. Starbucks cannot catch a break this week. Yeah, just days after police arrested two black businessmen waiting for a friend at a Philadelphia Starbucks. Now there's some new video shows an ugly confrontation at a California Starbucks. Brandon Ward says a Starbucks employee wouldn't give him the code for the restroom, telling him he needed to make a purchase. Well, Ward, who is black, said that he would buy a drink but needed to use the bathroom first. But the employee still refused, and that's when Ward says a white customer walked in without buying anything and got the bathroom code. Before you made a purchase, they let you use the restroom, right? Uh, I just typed in, I asked for the code. You asked for the code, and they just gave it to yeah. you, right? Before you made a purchase? Yeah. Okay, all right. Come on. Hmm. Starbucks has not commented on this specific incident yet, but the CEO did respond to the situation in Philadelphia, saying he was sorry and he would like to meet with the men affected there. Man. 
Well, Kendrick Lamar just did something no rapper has ever done before. He won a Pulitzer Prize for a rap song. Yeah, the award typically goes to classical or jazz artists, but his album, Damn, won one of the top writing prizes in the world. He also won four Grammys for that album. How about that? You know that album, right? Absolutely. I know all <laughs> albums. <laughs> He's, he, he likes all songs. I do. Doesn't matter what it is. We've got to, right now some pretty gusty winds. Take a look. This is by this afternoon, though, at around 4, 430. Those I winds are going to... I have to <laughs> lean in. You want to get a little closer? We're, we're trying to crop you out of the shot. Apparently if you so. Is that what it is? If you could just move just to the left, just, like four just a little or five bit more. steps, that'd be great. Is that good? Is that perfect? Perfect. perfect. Uh, out of the northwest by this afternoon, really gusty. Apparently, you can come back in now, Jace. Uh, so wind gusts up to about 60 miles per hour. It's going to be 50s and 60s today and a little cooler once all this moves out tomorrow. And the Colorado Springs Police uh, and or the State Patrol down there south said to me that still South Bend I-25 is closed down south of Pueblo for rolled over semi because of the strong winds. They they have no uh, estimate of when they're going to be able to let the high profile vehicles through again south of Pueblo because the winds are just way too strong. Mm. All right, it's 526 now. A new report is out this morning that shows how ready Colorado truly is for handling a public health crisis. Lawmakers are finally getting to a bill today designed to keep parents out of the dark. And a skier tries to stick a cool trick only to land himself facing felony charges. We're back after this. abandoned about 3,600 of the flow lines that were mentioned in uh, the news at the time of the tragedy, and we've taken those out of service. Right now at 530, it's been one year since that deadly explosion in Firestone, and lawmakers still aren't done trying to reform the oil and gas industry in our state. Students across the country are planning on walking out this Friday in honor of the 19th anniversary of the Columbine school shooting. Why Columbine school leaders are pushing back. CU Boulder is defending its student recruiting practices after a New York Times op-ed accuses the school of only visiting rich white high schools. Denver 7 News starts right now. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Mitch Jelnick. And I'm Molly Hendrickson. Glad to have you here with us. It's a windy start to it our is. morning out there. We've seen it already causing some problems with semis. And, yeah, and we look good in studio, but we step outside. You're not going to look so hot anymore. Yeah. yeah. Uh, really, take a look at this shot. This is from the, of the state capitol. And you can see the, the flag look there. That flag. Yeah, on the right hand side. Really Whip below it. it. And coming in out of the southwest right now at about 30 to 40 miles per hour. Those are some of the strongest gusts we've seen. Here's what that means. As far as temperatures go early on, very mild. We'll be in the upper 50s to even some low 60s. When we started out on air this morning at 430, it was 60 in Denver. It's gotten a little cooler since then, but we'll see upper 50s to low 60s through early afternoon. A lot of sunshine. The winds are going to get, well, unfortunately, windier as the day goes on. We're going to stay windy through the afternoon and then look at how much cooler it gets by eight. Once those winds start to shift by late afternoon, early evening, we'll be in the 40s by about eight o'clock. What a sunrise, though. Very bright eastbound drive in store. We've got winds out of the southwest here in Denver at about 25 to 40 miles per hour. You'll want two hands on the wheel today and even gustier as you get south of Denver. That's where some of the speeds have been at about 35 to 50 miles per hour with that southwesterly wind. Now, Jason, coming up in just a few minutes, I'll show you what our wind future cast looks like, how things are going to progress as the day goes on, and then just how much cooler it gets once this front rolls through. And you can see what the winds are doing down to the south. It's moving the camera around a lot, and we do have that blown over semi that's just south of Pueblo and unfortunately southbound I-25 is closed. It's also closed to any high profile vehicle semis, uh, big vehicles, anything like that south of Pueblo because of the strong winds and the blowover risk there. Same thing here on I-70 heading west of Golden all the way up to Gypsum. So some strong winds expected there here in town. It's actually not that bad. Yeah, it is windy for us here this morning, but at least we're driving in okay shape. 15 minutes across C-470, 10 minutes here on 225 and that drive to the north side. Not too bad just yet. Maybe 15 minutes there and from the the camera in downtown Denver. You can see that the camera not shaking around too badly as traffic just starting to get busy here at 20th. 532 now. It's been one year since that deadly house explosion in Firestone, which was caused by gas leaking into the basement from an uncapped flow line. And what you see behind us is what it looked like then. And this is what it looks like now. Just an empty lot, a reminder of what happened. And since that explosion, the oil and gas industry has come under intense scrutiny and will soon have to follow a, a new host of rules. Nicole Brady's in Firestone this morning for us. Nicole, many are still calling for more to be done in the industry. 
Yeah, everyone wants assurance that they're safe, especially the neighbors right here along Twilight. They look at these markers every day, marking the spot where Mark Martinez and Joe Irwin lost their lives last year along with their two pets. They were killed in that explosion one year ago today caused by that flow line that had been abandoned and should have been capped. So since this happened last year, the oil and gas industry has tested over 100,000 flow lines. But one thing we still don't know, and a lot of people want to know, is where exactly all these flow lines are. And there's been a lot of controversy over that. Uh, these flow lines, again, uh, are connected to wells and uh, should, when they're abandoned, they should be capped and marked off. But uh, after the Firestone explosion, many people called for a mapping system that would show where all these flow lines are. Uh, they didn't get that. In fact, under new rules, that will take effect May 1st. Maps for new flow lines will only be available to local governments, not the public. And those local governments actually have to sign a non-disclosure agreement uh, saying that they will not give that information to the public. Some communities are actually working out some of their own rules, hoping to get around that. Uh, in the meantime, state lawmakers have taken up a number of bills in this legislative session, hoping to provide more assurance to people that they are safe in oil and gas areas. But uh, only one bill has actually passed the state legislature and been signed by the governor so far. So uh, still a lot more that people wish would be done. Anna Darko, meanwhile, that owned the line in question here, says that it is working uh, with the community here to, to, to provide some assurance, providing uh, methane detectors to people. So uh, the best that they can do is tell people this is rare, it's unlikely to happen, um, but people still hoping for a little more assurance that they're safe. We're live in Firestone this morning. Nicole Brady, Denver said. Lawmakers aren't done reforming oil and gas regulations in our state. Later this week, state senators will hear a bill that would increase how often oil and gas companies have to report spills and fires and other incidents. What this bill does is it says, look, if you have a spill, tell us what happened and make sure that average consumers, average constituents can look that up in an easy way. Some lawmakers say they want to see a searchable website for oil and gas.